Man the fuck up, son. That is all. What's up, guys? John Anthony here from John Anthony Lifestyle. I'm back with Nicholas. We're going to expand on some of the topics from the last video. We're going to get into how to deal with that fear you feel when you want to talk to a stranger or talk to an attractive woman. How you deal with it for life, okay? I talked about in the last video how when you feel that approach anxiety, that fear when it's time to talk to a new stranger, you should treat it like a pebble in your shoe, okay? So you acknowledge that it's there, but you move past it. You don't let it stop you, all right? If you had like a mole on your face, it's not like you're gonna become like a hermit and never speak to anyone again because they're always gonna see the mole, all right? You just accept it and you move on and you can rise past that, okay? So we were having some discussions and what we realized is it's very, very helpful to get over this fear by having what we refer to as a pivotal experience where you were really close to pussying out, okay, and not doing an approach, and then you forced yourself to do it, okay, maybe you came in and, and did it weak, we're gonna tell a couple stories, maybe you did it weak, but the girl ended up being receptive and you ended up getting, in, getting her into your life, okay, for a, a long period of time, and then you can look back and be like, wow, I was so fucking terrified and this close to not doing it, and I did it, and it worked out great, okay? And that's gonna really be useful for you anytime you feel that fear to look back at that situation. And before you tell your story about um, CVS, uh, this doesn't only apply to approaching. This is a, a fear of women in general, because this is like, even after you approach, you might still feel afraid of just staying next to her yeah. and staying in set, as we call it, staying with the woman and keeping the conversation going. So like maybe like she might be annoyed or in a rush or something. So just getting through everything, the whole interaction, the whole entire feel, you gotta, fear, you got to handle it with a stepping point. So tell me what happened. Yeah, so, okay, before I get into the story, uh, please like and subscribe. If, <laughs> yeah, like and subscribe to this. Uh, if you have not already, for five new videos a week, soon to be starting next week, seven days a week. Okay, and those are going to be released every day at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, daily videos. Okay, with a, with a new editor, very fancy, flashy shit. Okay, but, yeah, touching on your point really quick before I tell the story. Um, it's very easy to take the, to the easy way out. Okay, what do you mean by that? When you have that fear, it's easy to be like, okay, I'm not gonna do this approach. Okay, now the fear is gone. You feel like a sense of relief, okay? But you pussied out. I'm gonna put up a little mystery clip here where he says, man the fuck up, son. Man the fuck up, son. That is all. There's that clip there. <laughs> it's pretty cool cool video he says this is what he's learned about women over a long period of time but it's true you need to man the fuck up okay dispelling in the short term of, er, and to, to just alleviate it for just a short period of time the next time you're gonna have to face it again all right so rather than like dip your foot in the water jump in the fucking pool get wet it's not that big of a deal the same applies like if you're at the gym right you're lifting doing some reps you start to feel a little bit of pain or this lactic acid build up it's easy to be like all right fuck this like it's starting to hurt now i'm gonna stop no doing those reps while you feel the pain and where it's where it's tough to fucking <laughs> tough to get it up <laughs> if you have that problem take maca watch my video on that but you do these these reps and that's what's causing the growth okay you feel that fear the moles on your face or the fucking pebbles in your shoe who the fuck cares you do it anyways and we're gonna make another video about being comfortable in your own skin and not giving a fuck that doesn't mean go act like a jackass but we're gonna get into how you can not treat these things as a big deal and use them as opportunities for growth, okay? So, with this, CBS. the CVS area, the one other analogy that I wanna to, to touch, we were talking about this too, like maybe your business is doing well, and you're like, okay, it's doing well, like I don't give a shit, I don't need to really improve it that much, versus like, I'm gonna keep trying to grow and, and, and really push myself and, and go into uncharted territory here, where I'm afraid, you know, I'm afraid of failing, or I'm afraid of not being able to figure it out. This is what it's, this is what it's, all about to be a fucking strong man, to be a strong alpha leader, and to make shit happen. Okay, so here, <laughs> we'll go. Yeah. Say real quick, 
Like, if you're in your comfort zone and your life is comfortable, you're doing something wrong. Like, if you're comfortable, it's just a straight, boring line. Like, if you're outside your comfort zone, it's like oscillating, there's some fun, there's a heartbeat to your life. Yeah, we were talking about earlier, like, a, an average life is boring, a, me a mediocre life is boring. Like, I set out to be the best guy in pickup, okay, to, to become the top seduction expert, the top seduction coach, and I think I've achieved that, okay, and, and I... You can point to a whole bunch of results I've gotten for myself and, and proof that I've been able to show and the average results I get from my clients. These are quantitative things. Whenever I say stuff like that, guys are like, are you really that arrogant? Like, cause I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm the best picker guy. I mean, a lot of other people think that as well and a lot of things can back that up. Okay, and it doesn't even really fucking matter. I, I can't vouch for that. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't fucking matter what the, I'm not gonna make a whole video here stroking my ego, but I could have just said like, oh, I'm gonna get, you know, laid a little bit more and then I, I'm just gonna stop. Or I'm gonna get a little bit better at chess or just a little bit better at poker and okay, now I'm happy with it. No, shoot for the stars, shoot for goals that seem like ridiculous or unattainable and then make them happen. Okay, and that's what, I'm gonna make a video about happiness, so like this, but Nietzsche here on my on my shirt, sounds like there's a, a, a giant disaster. Oh, yeah, it's a cardioid pattern. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Nietzsche here, he says that <laughs> <laughs> Just pick up, it's fine. He says that happiness is uh, the fe the feeling that power is growing, okay? That resistance is being overcome. So when you're setting these goals and fucking knocking them down, and and you can make them really lofty goals that no one's achieving or that very few percentage of people are achieving, whether it be financial, whether it be with fitness, whether it be with women, or whatever else with health, and you fucking do what you need to do, you execute, you man the fuck up, son as mystery says, and it's very rewarding. And then you set new fucking really lofty goals. Okay, so. CVS. CVS story. I was in a drugstore, like, you know, where you pick up prescription medication. It's like also a small convenience store in the United States called CVS, this is back like four or five years ago. I'd been with around 400 girls at this point, so I was no newbie to the game by any means. Um, and, you know, I saw this chick and she was kind of like dressed down. She had no makeup, she had her hair up, she had like a puffy coat on, so it was hard to see her body. And you know, her face wasn't like all done up looking her best, but it was one of those chicks, I could just tell like she, there's a good chance she's hot when she's like put together and like done up. This was like maybe like a Saturday at like 11 or something. Like she had probably been out the night before. She probably like just gotten up. And so here I am and I'm looking, she's like in line at the, at the pharmacy counter. There's like four people ahead of her. And I'm thinking like, oh fuck, like if I go in, and here, keep in mind I already fucked 400 girls at this point, but there's that pebble and I'm starting to give into it in this situation because I'm thinking, these people, it's silent in the fucking CVS, these people that are in line are gonna hear every word I'm saying. If the chick like rejects me or like responds negatively, they're gonna hear that and judge me, okay? We talked about in the last video like, who gives a fuck? We're not in little tribes anymore, right? Who gives a fuck what these people think? But it's a very real fear. Like, you're going to have to, like, face that, like, you know, judgment in the moment. So it's easy to be like, oh, I'm not going to put myself out there. I'm not going to do the approach. And that, that way I've protected my ego and I've protected my um, embarrassment, my potential embarrassment, okay? Now, I really was, like, about to pussy out. I was like, ah, you know, if only I'd seen her at a nightclub or at a bar, like, I would be blending in with the crowd. The music would be so loud, like... People wouldn't hear exactly what I was saying. People wouldn't know if I was part of her group or not. No one would even fucking see me go in or, or give a shit, right? Maybe I'll see her out sometime. And then I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, because there's been times in the past before this where I was this close to, to pussing out, usually more so in, in daytime environments because I'm more used to the nighttime stuff and people blend in more. The daytime approaching can have more, you know, potential people listening and, and you know, you can be like a spectacle, like if, you know, for instance, if you approach where there's a whole bunch of people and it's quiet, every, like literally everyone's listening and judging you. Um, not that that fucking matters, but it, you know, you, you feel like, uh, like this freezing up thing. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna, you know, avoid doing this approach. Okay. And I started like kind of wandering around the store and I'm thinking like, ah, oh, shit, you know, I really should talk to her. I really should talk to her. Cause like, what if she likes me and I get her number and I end up banging her or whatever? Uh, what should I do? She's not like an eight or nine. Like maybe I can just let this one go. 
And then I, I see like the line advancing, right? So now there's like two or three people left. And now I'm like, oh fuck, because now I'm battling against time. The window is closing. Because say I waited until she's like one person left in front of her or she's the next one in line, my interaction is gonna be disrupted. I'm gonna be cock blocked by the pharmacist basically calling her up, interjecting right in the middle of our interaction, and I'm gonna lose her. So I'm like hemming and hawing, but then the window is closing. And then I just, you know, you gotta, like, this is like the moment, like what I'm defining here, because this is gonna be in like every situation where you feel this fear. You need to just like face the fear head on and be like, fuck, like, fuck you, fear, or whatever, the, whatever you need to say to yourself. I'm not gonna be a pussy this time. I'm not gonna be like succumbing to this and let, and let it defeat me, okay? So I, I did whatever I had to in my head. I went in and I, Admittedly, I'm, I'm being wide open with you guys so you can relate to this. There's even a 400 lay count that I'm going through this kind of shit. And I'm thinking, cause I'm, you know, I'm sure lots of you are going through this on a daily basis, so you, so you know, it's very relatable. And I came in weak because I was scared. And what did I do? I said like, oh, hey, uh, uh, hey, what's your name? Oh, I'm Lauren, whatever, okay. Oh, um, you know, what do you, what do you do in the city? And she's like, oh, I'm a recruiter for technology jobs for information technology company. And I'm like, oh, cool. And then, so I started to like tie in because I have a computer science background is one of my degrees along with philosophy. And I was like, okay, uh, well, well I, you know, I work in the computer science industry. I'm kind of looking for a job right now. Like, you think you'd be able to help me? And she's like, oh yeah, sure. Let me give you my business email. And then I'm thinking like, oh fuck, right? Like I just, I just made this like a, a professional frame. So now, she doesn't see me as a romantic interest or as, you know, she sees me as like someone that she can maybe find a job you for. You framed yourself as a client. As a client, yeah. So then in my mind, I'm like, fuck, okay, well, it's better than nothing. At least I approached. So I get her business email. And then when I got home, I wanted to like look her up on, on LinkedIn, which is like a business networking site. I wanted to see like, how does she look when she's not all like dressed down? And I see her, her name based on this email and I Google image search her name. I sound like a fucking stalker or something. And she comes up in these like professional model pictures and I'll, I'll show you those those later. She's laying amongst like flower beds and little bikinis. And this chick's like a legitimate like nine five, right? Like she's like doing all these poses in lingerie and like all these like provocative poses. And yeah, there was like a little Photoshop involved in some of them. <clears throat> this chick's like legit really hot. And turns out, this is in America that I met her, but turns out she's like Eastern European roots. She's like Czech or whatever. Uh, originally, or had Czech, you know, genetics or whatever, Czech, Czech Republic. So, um, long story short, I, I go into the email and I say like, hey, it's John from CVS. Like, to be honest, I have a job already. I just thought you were really cute, right? I thought I was very attracted to you. And she replied and was like, oh, thanks. Like, you were cute yourself, you were cool. Do you want to get a coffee sometime? And I was like incredulous because I had seen this chick's pictures and I was like, holy fuck. It's not like I hadn't gotten chicks of that caliber before, but here is an interaction that I ran very weak, that I framed myself out as a customer, that I, that I almost fully pussied out on, and I didn't even think it went that well. And now here she is asking me to meet up, right? So went on the coffee date, ended up making out after, she wouldn't come home with me, and then she suggested like a few days later, she's like, oh, why don't you come to this bar my friend's working, and she was she had like a very busy life so traditionally i wouldn't do a date like that just because that person's gonna like interfere with the the dynamic the one-on-one -on -one dynamic and potentially cock block etc <coughs> it's good to have all the variables under your control and all the, the you know you, you should be controlling what's happening the, the parameters of the date so but i but she had limited time and she's really hot and so i go and meet her and like she's friends with this dude bartender and i'm like oh fucking great he's gonna you know be trying to compete but he was cool he was just doing his own thing not even talking about this most of the time. Flirt with her a bunch more, okay? Get sexual, verbals, whispering shit in her ear, end up going back to my place, bang her that night, and then she was on rotation for months. So the point of the story is, like, I was this close to not going in, and I can, at this point in my, my seduction journey, or whatever the fuck you wanna call it, career, <laughs> there's been plenty of times where I felt that fear and went in, and it ended up working out great. The chick was very receptive, and then she's in your life for months. So that is very powerful to help you get over this permanently because when you're in those situations, even if you've never had, had a attractive girl where you were afraid and, and then it worked out, if you still present yourself as the high value guy, like I tell guys and my clients and in my products, 
Think of your value as 100 out of 100, it doesn't change. You have a brick wall here, external events, things don't impact it. You're always keeping your value very strong. Okay, you bring your best self to the table. There's gonna be chicks that are into that. And then you're gonna fucking land that eight or that nine for the first time. And then when you approach a seven or seven and a half, you're like, I fuck chicks hotter than this, right? And it doesn't mean every seven's gonna like you, every seven and a half out of 10 is gonna like you. But it's not a big deal. You've closed chicks hotter, or you've closed chicks of that caliber, and it's not a big deal. And then you can reference back at that and be like, why the fuck am I, am I scared again? So, oh yeah, it's just a pebble. And I wanna actually follow up with a story in the next video. We're gonna, this one's getting very long on it right now, but um, how fear in general, like, and the fear of staying in, in set and just afraid of being next to a woman, and how, how a girl can be very intimidated, especially uh, intimidating to you, is that how you said it? Intimidating? Yeah. Uh, and like making you feel like afraid and uh, that you, you know, you're wasting her time that you know she's above you. Um, even if she's, a, especially if she's a, with a friend who's not being nice. But <laughs> if you can stay and, and go past that fear, I've had some amazing results and had like a crazy girlfriend. So I'll tell you guys more about that story next video. Yeah, so please like and subscribe below, right here, if you have not, <laughs> if you have not already. And uh, lots more good shit coming. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.